The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Check out great deals throughout the store at Safeway. This week at Safeway, get mega packs of USDA Choice Boneless Beef Chuck Roast for $3.97 per pound with digital coupon limit two packages. Plus, Hass Avocados are 10 for $10 member price. And get Fuji Apples for just $0.77 cents per pound with digital coupon. Also this week at Safeway, get selected varieties of Lucerne Milk Gallons for the member price of $3.99 each when you buy two. Visit Safeway.com or head into your local store for more deals. Previously on Roe Britannia. Right, boys, there is an island called Nassau. We stay there. This may be an island for us to settle down. Oh. The name's Bluebeard. Nice to meet you, Captain. Ned Bluebeard is an old friend of mine. Take this man to the infirmary. A very sleek looking Ooh, ship. A big that's the command. This man must not reach Neverwinter. After it. Shit. Oh. Here. Remember the crew? What's left of them is nailed to the fucking ceiling. Let's get out of here. Tied to the outside of the hull are bodies. Lads, unfurl the sails. we got to get the fuck out of here. Your boss, the commandant, where is he? He's dead. They killed him. They killed everyone. I saw it all. Why did they leave you? I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> we're battling in the pocket, but... No eyelids. No skin. No service. I think we should report yeah. to Timbers. These sort of vacant buildings that look like they're primed for a dwarf to kick down the door and move it. This is, in fact, just a statue. And by statue, I mean bird bar. If there's any buildings near the beach that I could move into. Yeah, there's a nice looking beach house. Timbers, are you there? Uh, you hear Starflower's voice. Where's the bot? There's something you need to know. Bluebeard, he hasn't made it. Oh, no. Timbers is taking it quite hard. Don't you touch anything in this room. Maybe if we throw him into a new, like, adventure investigation, it might help him work through the grieving process. I didn't think they were real. Dregs. They're the name for sailors that spent too long at sea, lost their way in society. Captain, the... Uh... Get out! We have important business here. He's back. Boys, I have to prepare myself for this evening's ceremony. Fuck off. Fuck, Fuck off, Captain. Fuck off, Captain. Fuck off, Captain. Forwards, Captain. Always forwards. The only way out is through. All caught up. Good. Let's get back to the action. on the island and you just had a bit of a bit of a poignant moment with timbers and starflower and this terrifying body that you'd brought back and you'd gone off get to go ready and get yourself party. ready for well not a party but uh a, a memorial i'm just gonna look at jeff and yeah so solemnly uh, uh very quickly well i get to wear fancy clothes yes somber ones but toy. you know fancy if you like and to be fair i don't really wear much color anyway <laughs> The mankini's out then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's for afterwards. So, but it's very black. quickly, I'm going to yeah. go around the group and let's say you have about yeah. four or five hours before the, the evening's proceedings okay. take place. What is uh, Keth doing with his time? Is this before the ceremony in the wake? Yes, before the memorial, yeah. Well, I guess then he is dusting off Bill. Making sure he's okay. okay from his dangerous journey. Well, where, where did he go from the from the from? Well, let's call it the governor's house. Let's call it Timber's house. The Timber okay. house. Right. So I think right. it's time that Keth went and found some new accommodation. Um, so that's the first yeah. thought on his mind. <laughs> so I'm thinking. You so, mean you're leaving the ship? Well, we're back on. <laughs> the ship is the car. We, we don't yeah. have to live in the car. No, you don't live in the car, do you? <laughs> Malrus, as a hermit, is definitely going to live in his car. So we've all got our favourite seats in the car. I call permanent shotgun. I like to be behind the passenger, so I've got extra leg room. 
Maris' on-island yes. home is just a pole next to the docks that he can yeah. moor his <laughs> ship up to. That's the yeah. only bit of property he owns on the island. He just owns a mooring. So far. <laughs> and I've got quite a f- fetching bud. Yeah, you do. That is true. Keth is going to go down to the beach where Nancy's bar is because he likes to be close to the bar because obviously right. that's his lifeblood. <laughs> yep. Um, and he, he gets that. to see check on the cows, but he's going to hang up a hammock. He's, he's going to throw up a hammock between some palm trees down there. Uh, okay, that he's envisaged. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, that, that's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can have some palm trees. It's cool. Happy days. There'll be a nice rock for Bill to chill out on in the day, and there'll be uh, a cool. And they'll warm up, and there'll be a, a warmish rock for him to chill out on at night. You know, he can go out. And he can he can frolic in the sea. I could shoot stuff. <laughs> It's all been great. So that's what I'll be sort of a bit like hanging up clothes. <laughs> and okay, just... so you you've just set up a little like uh, bivouac on the uh, on the beach, then have you? Yes, he's gone. Right, okay, cool. Yep, sun between his toes. That's what nice. Keith would have okay. been doing, I think. Fine. Um, that sounds great. Malrus, what's Malrus been doing? Um, so I want to go and check out the um, the old beach hut that was just down the way from the docks. Yep. Um, just see what's what's in there, whether if it can move in. Yeah, so you go back to the, uh, the the property that I pointed out to you last time when you asked, and it's a it's a small it's a pretty small property just on the beachfront promenade, if you will. Not exactly a promenade, mm. but the sort of row of properties that overlook the beach from the township. And it's uh, this particular one um, that it looks the most vacant. It is quite small. It's if you were to compare it to a property, I would say it's somewhere along the lines of, imagine the beach huts that you get on classic British beaches. Uh, it's like one, two of those sort of knocked together. Yeah. I can do nice. that. A red and white bathing oh, suit. Wow. The old okay. Victorian yeah. English bathing suits in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a little cutout uh, just outside. There's a little a picture with, with the faces cut yes. out just out front uh, of a policeman just uh, nicking someone, pilot. you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there's a punch and judy set oh, i'll, I'll play no the reason. robber yeah it's, yeah yeah <laughs> old chip cones a thousand seagulls what <laughs> that's a swarm of seagulls technically yeah, yeah, yeah right. somehow there's more sand inside the uh, the beach hut than there is actually on the beach uh, no idea well, how it's happened have to sort that out then yeah. <laughs> spend my next few hours sweeping okay cool we know what Mowers is doing yellows <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yalan, Yalan does come. He's he turns up with a mop. He brings a mop, a wet mop. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> Hello. Can you sweep the sand out, please, Yalan? Um, Not mop. Um, sweep. Just dry, dry mop. mop. That is dry mop. It dry out. mop. Um, um, sweep. I'm. Hmm. I can mop it. Don't don't wet it. Just just dry mop it out. Practice mopping. With a it's a, uh, Yalan sort of agrees, but uh, as you turn your back, you hear a distinctive splosh sound of, uh, of a mop <laughs> into a bucket. Yeah, I'm gonna don't tell him how to do his job for my uh, pistol. Oh, go, and it, end Yalan and um, sigh and yeah. think better. You betrayed me for the last time, Yalan. Back up and carry on and walk back to the boat. Oh. You just hear the sound of wet mopping sand now. <laughs> You've tasked Yalan with effectively mopping the beach. That's that's what's happened here. Um, yeah. So we know what Yalan's doing for the next ten years. Mm. Um, Sandcastles at the sun. Yes. Watch this space for explosives, Yalan. There could be IEDs anywhere. <laughs> Derek, what what did uh, uh, what does Derek, Derek get up to? Is going to. Um, he's going to want to take another look, trying to find sort of a house that he can. I think Chip's got something in his eye. Um, it's fine. He's the one cutting this. Um, sand. Yeah, it's it's sand. Some, it's, <laughs> description was so vivid that it's actually <laughs> happened. Um, I wonder if Yalan is here. Um, so Derek is gonna he's gonna yeah. want to make another perception or investigation check to see where uh, any potential for him to live is that's not a bird bath, but maybe close to the bird bath is what he'd quite like. Yeah, that's close to the bird bath. Okay, oh, yeah. uh, roll uh, an and investigation three. check then, please. I, tr- I rolled an, a natural three. A natural yeah, I've three. I've got plus four, but I've taken on Jeff's. Uh, You're rolling with somehow. Jeff's dice now. <laughs> taken on, somehow taken on Jeff's performance. Absolutely. Oh, oh <laughs> the cursed dice. Forever infected. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So you find a small one-bedroom flat on the third floor of uh, a slightly rundown building, but it is all yours. 
But it's all my own. How far away from the beach am I? Uh, pretty far. Pretty far. Uh, and it, unfortunately, it doesn't face the beach either, so you don't get Is the there a lady um, with, with what, the equivalent of a camera show? Yeah. I was thinking of a place in the sun type. They take them into a <laughs> tiny room and go, here's your bathroom and your kitchen. And also there's a spare mattress that the person left here before. You might want to clean it or just flip it. Um, <laughs> No, it's like I'll um, just camp down it's like that there. scene from Gavin and Stacey where the, the guy's showing you around just oh, very quickly open and shuts the door and says, and that's the bathroom. Mm. And <laughs> bed hasn't got a shower a or hasn't got a shower where you thought it ought to oh, be. Right, well, that's fine. I've destroyed many a bathroom in my time, so uh, that would be perfect. Do you mind if I move this bird bath in? It's hurting my arms a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I think... Oh, yeah, I, sure, I think sure. we could get... It will look lovely in the wet room, yeah. come kitchen, come dining, come living, come exactly. bedroom. Is that why it's so wet? Because of all the cum? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Not yet, Jeff. Not yet. And so it begins. Oh, it's full of piss. From so Derek's settling into his, uh, his dingy inner city flat, bizarrely. It, yeah, he's going to put the um, bird bath into like a feng shui place type. Try and get some energy flowing okay. <laughs> around here. Okay. Um, <laughs> And he's going to just Next to like, his Japanese peace lily. Have some... Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a Japanese peace lily. <laughs> um, I can hit somebody with it if I decide to, so that's fair. Um, yeah. Uh, and then he's just going to spend some time um, thinking about, you know, people that have lost. There's a, a funeral coming up and he's going to sort of fumble with his Hawkeye pendant and all of that kind of jazz. Okay. Oh, very nice. What does Jeff get up to then? Oh, just really furiously masturbating again. Well, I suspect. No, no, not at this point. Spooky goes. He feels like he's been enough of a wanker for aggressively. <laughs> um, so I think the invisible wanker. <laughs> I feel like Jeff. At this, he's not really good at like home purchase. He's only ever bought one home, and that wasn't really bought. It was sort of inherited to him. So he's never really done the whole buying a house thing. Yeah. Um, I suppose this is more just choosing a house. So. Can I, yeah, can I have a look? Every, as everyone else has wandered off to housing units, can I be like, well, I best find something myself? And I'm, I'm naturally going to want to try and find one of the largest buildings I can. Uh, okay, the largest building on the island is the fort. Well, that's probably already taken um, by Timbers and other people <laughs> like, owning it. So the next, the largest housing looking place. That's that not, hasn't uh, been the largest house, too much the largest house after the fort is the house you've just come from which is timber's house so next one down next down the pecking order uh, okay uh, jeff scouts out in that case roll, that. Uh, <laughs> roll timber's got that. investigation then and he's quite quite depressed at the moment so probably don't want to take I it from him investigation is... welcome to location location Derek's. location with dungeon master james <laughs> <laughs> Derek's already moved in it's just 11 uh, Eleven. So well, as you're walking around, you you bump into two to two people. You bump into uh, a uh, a man and a woman. Oh, sorry. Um, I should look, watch where I'm going. Hello, <laughs> uh, my name's Bill, and this is uh, this is Shirsty. You seem like really happy people. Hi, good to meet you, Bill and Shirsty. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Have you found yourself a home on the island? Not not yet. I'm looking though. My name's Jeff. Jeff Silverbow. Good to meet you. Hello, Jeff. What are you looking for in a house? Somewhere, you know, to call home, really, that I can convert to, like, my place of my own, really. Jeff Silverberg can piss 13 litres in one city. <laughs> and he works part-time <laughs> killing random people that he comes across. His budget is 33 <laughs> and a half thousand pounds. pounds. <laughs> 33 and a half gold. <laughs> yeah, just not even thousand, just 33 no. and a half gold. Yeah. He'll sleep in a bit if he has to. Because I've got one gold piece. I happen to have seven and a half. <laughs> it's, right. And it's getting quite cold. <laughs> and Sorry, Shirsty, you were saying. I haven't found anywhere yet. Oh, Bill and Shirsty then decide that they're going to have a bit of a competition and they're going to show you three properties and you're going to choose the one that you like the best. Oh, excellent. Um, and they show, you know, they show uh, you the Shirsty fort. shows you, a, shows <laughs> you a, a beachfront property, but there is quite a severe leak in oh. inside. And unimaginatively um, decorated inside. It is unimaginatively, unimaginatively decorated. Not, not very big, but it has got panoramic views. Yeah. 
Um, of course, Bill it's rough. takes you to uh, takes you to a very large property, oh. um, but it has hasn't been redecorated since the seventies. So everything is velour and bright orange. Conversation pit. Uh, yes, yes, there is a conversation pit. This, this reminds me a lot uh, of my bedroom growing up. Um, I mean, uh, I'm and, sure this would look great. Uh, back unfortunately, in the day. they have done some checks, and there is asbestos there. So oh. one of those things you'll have to deal with if you decide to make renovations. Yeah. Um, and then there's the wild car property, which they show oh, you, which is a yeah. bit smaller. So we've just we've gone location one, we've done location, and then we've got location. Yep. You've got okay. a leak, location. we've got asbestos. Yeah, you do have so a this third, this third one is probably smaller than you were looking for. It's certainly not among the largest in the island, okay. but it is right on the main high street. And oh, from like the that. front garden, you can see the beach from there. Oh. It's handy for Nancy's, handy for the, the docks. And uh, the it's right been immaculately here. updated. And very recently, uh, thanks to uh, Cannonball Fire, has had a whole uh, rooftop terrace added to the property. That is going to add value <laughs> oh, when you come to sell. Value. Oh, yeah. definitely add value. Um, I've yeah. heard it never rains. Nice, no. A uh, nice mezzanine. Ho- De- well, hopefully it doesn't Definitely going to go. I have to say, whilst I really appreciate all the effort you've gone to, you two, um, I, I feel like that I'm going to have to go away. Can I, is there a, like, a nearby? I'm going to go to Nancy's and just have a chat in the garden with, just have a chat with Casper and see what we think about the options yeah. she presented us with. You'll um, talk to Casper. He has to make sure that he's <laughs> feeling at home. Sure. Do your, do your little sure. voiceover as well. Yeah. 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 You do your I, bit to camera. I really yeah. like the th- first two properties, but the asbestos. Hmm. <laughs> the mesothelioma is going to be a Casper? killer. <laughs> you didn't really think the asbestos would be good. You, you were concerned about where where you were going to stay. Oh yeah, okay. Well, but you like you like the beach view in the third. I quite like the third one too. No. Meanwhile, there's just like people going past. <laughs> people walking yeah. past. Just me stu- sat there at a pub with half a pint from Nancy. Just sat there chatting to my hands. <laughs> oh okay, yeah no, yeah okay. Bill Skursky Skursky. Skirsty, Skirsty, yeah, Shirsty, Bill Skirsty, Shirsty. I, thanks, so, which one have you decided to go for? I, I, I put you in my. Well, after a long deliberation, Casper has uh, he suckered me into it, and uh, we're going to go for. He's talking to his hand. We're going to go for your wild it's card. A joke that only you get. <laughs> wild card? Yeah, we'll go for the wild cards. <laughs> He's going for the wild. Card. I knew he'd go for that one, Shirsty. Uh, congratulations! Yeah, we'll get indeed. you. Uh, we'll get you in Ballsy an offer move. now, and you should hear by the end of the day. Ah, excellent, excellent. Uh, so, do I just leave my stuff for you? Or it's all on this <laughs> ship over there. Do I? To, I'm not going to carry that. So, I'm just going to. You've got guys for this, I'm sure. Uh, we're thanks, not a moving agency. For, I really appreciate all your hard work. <laughs> Oh, so you you managed yeah. to find yourself a property. Uh, it's Set a nice place, on. mate, on the high street. You've chosen well, mm. and oh, perfect. Later on that evening, you all reconvene at uh, the, the the town square, as it were, of this township, where the memorial for Bluebeard has has been arranged to take place, and everyone is kind of there, dressed mm. in their most somber pirating gear. And Casper's got you know, a everyone black looks. I think I'll wear the black eye. Yeah, what what are we wearing, boys? <laughs> what are we what are we what are we wearing? Full uh, full uh, mafioso. Uh, yeah. With a single red rose. <laughs> Me. Yeah, Maurus, what are you wearing? I will wear the best suit from my T V days. Sphere days, okay. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um but I will but it'll be obviously a black little black number. Little black okay. number. He slipped three into piece, a little two black piece. number. <laughs> Let me just three. slip it to something Three piece, more very nice. Comfortable. Okay. Are we going open collar or is there a tie involved as well, Maris? Uh, there will be a tie. Excellent. Good choice. Very, very formal. Very nice. Mm. Uh, Keth, what are we wearing? Um, so Keth uh, was going to go for the full black mafioso look. Black suit, black shirt, black tie, red rose. Um, yep. He also, um, unfortunately, he only c- he could only find shorts, so he's had to go for uh, <laughs> yep, okay. shorts and some Fine. socks. Those Daisy sock Jakes, braces. Right? Okay. Yep, I got you. <laughs> but immaculately shined <laughs> shoes, shorts, shiny shoes. He looks like a battery kid, but he's being very somber sock about braces. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, cool. And uh, Jeff, what's Jeff wearing? Uh, so Jeff's gone. He hasn't really got a lot of fancy clothes. Uh, being you know relatively young, still I think he's sort of aging on twenty three nearly. Um, and he's still quite got formal, not really got formal clothes. So he goes down to the costume department, and he, they finds that they have got like a nice full black 
sort of suit looking thing so he pops it on and yep. he's got that and it's got a nice red inlay and uh yep. it isn't until he gets to sort of like the headgear that he realizes it's actually a dracula outfit but there's not a lot of any other options here so he's got this nice black cape on but other okay. than that, he's in full black outfit. High collar. Yeah. Black cape with <laughs> high collar. At what point did he realise? Did he was he half made up, really pale? <laughs> and he's yeah, like, hang he's on. The when he was, on when well. he was reading the instructions for the suit, Do I need that seemed these to say teeth? apply white face makeup to the face, he was halfway through going What, Do what? I? dripping blood? <laughs> hang on, I've missed Do I lunge at the corpse? <laughs> <laughs> Feasting for that. Okay, sweet, sweet and what's Derek doing? Um, Derek is going to go in his in whatever armor he's been because he changed into the royal guard thing, yeah, and then changed back. We've been on the Valkyrie, so he's got his armor. He can spend some time taking his battle armor with him. He's going to get like charcoaled up and take his weapons with him because uh, the man <laughs> died. He was a pirate. He was a, okay. You know, I'm gonna. Just turn up, tools up to the nines. Oh, if you're doing charcoal, to pay my respects. I'm going to dip okay, my pink. Cool. My, my pink marigold's got to get dipped in charcoal and properly covered up. Then, if you're doing charcoal up, <laughs> so you're Dracula, uh, but with a really dirty marigold on. <laughs> yeah, that's a look. Okay, uh, so you all arrive. You all meet up at the, uh, the entrance of the town square, and um, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of people gathered around, and it's a it's a rather moving ceremony. Timbers Timbers does a, a sort of moving speech. And, uh, you know, he says, says a lot about his, his history with Bluebeard and their comradeship. And there are, um, you know, you, you all sing a, a pirate hymn. Uh, it goes, you know, yo, ho, all together. Yeah. Raise oh, the colors. All that, you know. <laughs> Derek doesn't really know the words, but he's going to just like, ah, da, 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 Bluebeard's dead. Do it, sing it about <laughs> so, half a second behind, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed meeting you. I thought you had a medical condition, but it turns out it might have just been the conditioner you were using or something. Anyway, it rest in peace. Lifestyle you were leading. Yeah. Yeah, all of that. All of that. But mad um, respect. Me, so you know, many tears, so, many tears oh. are shed. I would like to make um, <laughs> if I if I need to make some sort of check. Fair enough, but I want to wait to the perfect moment to start firing off my guns. <laughs> I was going to suggest you want to do a twenty-one gun Celebrate. salute. <laughs> yeah, do you I think do that, I think there is a there's an appropriate moment at the okay. end at the end of the ceremony when uh, the the casket is uh, sort of taken away and and off to be buried at the new the newly uh, reinstated cemetery on the island. Yeah, and uh, there's like a moment the when uh, many, many of the pirates pull out muskets and uh, and yeah. pistols and fire around into the air. So if you want to do that, as well, I, I will yeah. join in. Jeff's just going to grab the edge of just, his cape and just sort of throw can, it over can his head. Anyone like, who's shit. shooting a pistol into the air, just roll, roll a d twenty. Oh god! Nah, Jeff's ducking away. That scared the crap out. He didn't expect. Ten. I truly am, truly am rolling Jeff's dice. I just rolled a natural oh, three again. <laughs> Sorry, a six. At, and what did Derek roll? I, I, I truly am rolling Jeff's dice. I I, I rolled a natural three again. <laughs> oh, I was on, say. on the gold Jeff dice. The, this was a game of don't roll a one. Yeah, um, so fine. congratulations, none of you rolled a one. Oh, yeah. Hooray! And you, none of you accidentally shoot anyone Falling else. Eight. Hooray! And, and cause all is well. Chaos. And then uh, once once the uh, the moment has passed, there are some barrels rolled out. Roll and out the barrel. Timbers, Timbers announces that uh, this evening's proceedings will proceed with much drinking and merriment, um, and yes. uh, toasting so, toasting like of Captain Bluebeard. Okay, yeah, I'll I hope toast this hors d'oeuvres. There's toast, Keth. They just said, <laughs> "I'll take toast." And. A bit, uh, yeah, after, hungry, I mean, actually. after a few, Got after a after a little while, Timbers finds you, finds you boys all all together, and he says, uh, "Thank you very much for coming, boys. It means a great deal to me." It's not a problem, Captain. I'm not drunk. <laughs> you've already. I'm afraid. I Jeff's see you've had uh, had one or two uh, beers already. Very good. Um, who read? Cheers this? to Captain Bluebeard. Eh? Cheers. Uh, Cheers. It must to Bluebeard. be Bluebeard. Cheers. Cheers to Bluebeard. Doesn't matter how much I drink, I just can't seem to get drunk. Yeah, it must be the um, spirit of I Bluebeard. Notice, you are as you are as sober as a as a nun. I know. That's, why did you challenge really well. me to drink, you cuss, then? 
You're Stop doing really well, Stop telling Jeff. me to drink not Jeff. with you, then. Yeah, to be fair, it's but not it's really fair fun. on him anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point, Jeff. All right, <laughs> but <laughs> as long as this time, you're not going to make me do any silly tasks or anything like that. Well, we might ask you to get your 15-inch weapon out at some point. Well, <laughs> you'll have to ask, really. Uh, uh, yes. I've Peter's heard many stories about this from the crew. I hear they are calling you the tripod. No, that's Malrus. I thought that was but, tripod toss cobble. That's tripod toss cobble. But you they, could also qualify. They just qualify call me Mister Big Penis. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna ah, just very what, wise. What Do you want having... another Timbers? Would you like another drink? I'm going to the bar. I can get you another drink. <laughs> just uh, wait there, young boy. We have things to discuss. Oh, um, sorry. As as we're having this penis conversation, I'll turn to Timbers and go. Um, <laughs> So, Timbers, uh, who gave the lovely service that just happened? That was a beautiful memorial. <laughs> uh, were you not paying attention, boyo? I can't remember if he spoke or they got he spoke. Oh, was it you? Was that you? I was uh, sort of at the back of the crowd. I didn't want to intrude. I'm uh, really sorry. Um, I would uh, I would have hoped my dulcet tones would have uh, carried all the way well, to the back. Well, maybe but, just project uh, a little. I uh, appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Talk to the back of the auditorium. That's what I was always told when yeah, i was shouting when i was shouting for help help <laughs> get them off me in the street um anyway no, the enjoy the rest of the ceremony fine words. no no no, no oh, i've <sighs> had a couple of drinks it's been a long time um you can get you can assist me at the bar derek come on okay i'm sorry tim as well you he wants to say something to us oh yeah oh, it's, boys. it's a lovely yes, service thank well you for done. reminding me he was very I important have... to us all and i hope you find you know glory in his death and peace <laughs> Perfect. Certainly do. Uh, I am, you, as I have reminded you on occasion, a man of my word. As he starts to talk again, I'm just going to start repeating the same, uh, the same yeah. thing, just drunkenly just... sort of interrupting. But I'll, I'm listening to what he's saying. Very good. <laughs> I am, as I say, a man of my word, and I will be thought of as such. And as such, I promise that. Uh, you would all receive a fair cut of our bounty as a member of the crew. Nice. And receive payment for missions accomplished. So. Fuck. Ooh. We haven't. I have I've got left rent a little something now. for you. I instructed Starflower to Sick. make the arrangements. If you make your way to the Teldath. Ah, Frostbeard okay. is there. Uh, he has something uh, waiting for you, I have no doubt. But there is also in my fuck. cabin a small chest with your names on it. Oh, that's Please very, help yourselves thank- and divvy up the bounty there inside between yourselves. Thank you, Captain. That's very nice thank of you. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Timber. We, we chased down the guy. We found the new threat. Oh, you yeah. know, We did lose quite a lot of our money yeah. on the way back. Well, yeah. Please go and give Mr. Frostbeard my best. He was invited here, but uh, on later consideration, I uh, instructed him to remain on guard on the death. It seems that he has taken a bit of a strange turn. Oh. Oh, not more so. He had his jumping through all kinds of hoops last last time. time. Unfortunately so. This is going to be brilliant. I like like his game show jacket. Before I see him. Yeah, I know. Same. Um, Fuck. We shouldn't have busted out the barrels, so. So quickly. It's Kath's fault this time. You ch- stopped <laughs> drinking. He's not drinking drunk. Yeah, Kath, you're like seemingly okay. Maybe it's too I'm leaving Sorry, it's Kath. Behind. You just can't hold your espresso martinis. <laughs> <laughs> is that what Kath's drinking? <laughs> it's just <laughs> everyone else is there with flagons of beer, and somehow <laughs> Kath, with his massive hands, <laughs> is there with a tiny little martini glass. He's got the three, espresso uh, mar- with the a three coffee, coffee beans, beans in it. Just yeah. in the top. <laughs> <laughs> just delicately and I'm very comfortable with who I am it's delicious <laughs> <laughs> that's fine oh, that's too- you better be because Jeff's looking a little bit I think he might be level pegging with you soon Jeff well my, my, my height is growing I'm a growing lad I assume okay. at this point you drag us um, to see Flint Frostbeard and a lad yeah so um, uh <laughs> Timbers, he he wishes you he's, he's you know he wishes you all a good night and cheer toasts once more mm. to to the memory of Bluebeard and he is sort of dragged away to go and shake hand shake hands and kiss faces 
of various other people. <laughs> Kiss babies. There are, baby there are seldom few babies on this yeah. island. And shaking uh, babies and kissing hands. <laughs> So what are you doing? <laughs> are you spending the rest of the night drinking, or are you going to go straight to the daff? What's the I'm going to go straight to daff. the daff. Straight to the daff. I hear okay. Flint, Flint Foss Beard's hand in his got some pretty receipt. cool shit. Uh, <laughs> <it's expensive. laughs> right, fine. Okay, uh, cool. So you make your way over to the daff. Are you swimming, walking, hopping in any of the long boats? What? Uh, whereabouts is it? It's, it's moored in the cove. I'm going to walk across the water. Walk across the water. It, Maris, are you capable yeah. of giving Keth a piggyback? <laughs> Where's Nancy's? On oh, the, is that? On the, we're going to Nancy's. Right? No, no, no. We're going to <laughs> no. Flint Frostbeard. Oh, we're going, we're going to Flint, Flint Frostbeard, we're Jeff. To, we're going to the Flotsbeard. We're going to Flint Frostbeard, Jeff. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Just, oh, do you want some water no, we're or going, something? We're going to Flint Frostbeard. We're on it. We're on it. We're going. Um, oh, we're going to win again, aren't we, Keth? Keth's going to say... We're going to win. <sighs> Bibbidi bobbidi broom? Nothing happens. So... <laughs> Is there some sort of boat there? Yeah, there's there's, long there's boat. Yeah, yeah. There's long boats you can get to the they, yeah, it's fine. Just sort of jump onto a long boat. There's plenty there, of them that landed on the beach. You can hop in one and it will take you straight to the death. Who's broom going appear? in a long boat? Me. I'm, oh no. Fuck, I'm gonna fall over. Uh, no, the broom didn't appear. Well seeing as Yeah, there was just a sad hollow sound while I'm the broom gonna... should be. So Maris, you're walking. I'm walking. I'm already pretty much there for all the fat I'm guys being done on the beach. To give me a piggyback, boat. So I can I'll only go in the long boat, boat as well. <laughs> I can't lift you. You're twice the size of me. The other three of you, can you all roll a dexterity saving throw? Because as you uh, as you zoom up the beach, you get ratcheted up the side of the ship again. Dude, and it tips over as you get to the top. And what do you roll for your dexterity saving throw? Uh, Natural 20. <laughs> Nat 20. For once, you land wow. as gracefully as a cat. Nice, because I'm nice. so pissed. Yeah. I accidentally over like, overcompensate and like, whoa. You ragged off. 16 for me. No, 17 now. 17, yeah, you land fine. I got a 19 total. And 19, you land as well. You all, yep. you all land like in the Charlie's Angels pose. Nice. Uh, <laughs> as this through. We're, we think we're so cool. Maurice, you, you just uh, hop over the, over the rail at that point and, and Maurice, see them all just land in that position. Yeah. Maurice is just sauntering across. And we're like, yeah, we're badasses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just Hello, as I Maurice. managed to climb up the ladder and see them and like, what are you doing? Yeah. Weirdly, yeah. weirdly sort of sweeps his feet like he's just walked in with dusty shoes on. <laughs> Sorry, I'll have it. And yeah, this ship's all carpet, don't you know? <laughs> Gallon's been slowly carpeting the ship. Right. You make your way down into the de- the bowels of the ship and you head to the quartermaster's quarters. And as you enter the room, it is again dark inside, as though magically dark. Oh. Uh, no. And then, Ooh, all of a sudden, you uh, lights come on and you hear... What is that? I, I, is it going to be karaoke night again? Jeff starts to boogie a little bit. <laughs> Why is my oh, foot tapping? Derek's head's going. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm wow. enjoying this. Flint? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to town this evening what? to play the latest game. Uh-huh. Well, here's yeah, catchphrase, and here's your oh, host. Oh, I bloody it's love this one. Oh, my God. I love it. We love you, Flint. We love you, Flint. Oh, that's Flint. He was behind the curtain the entire time. Oh, and the lights this. come on, and... Uh, um, <laughs> And the lights come on, and you see standing uh, on this stage where there's a, there's uh, four podiums on one side and a big screen on the other. And standing there in a very jazzy-looking red sparkly suit is Flint Frostbeard. And the, and you find yourselves at the top of some stairs with seats all around. Mm. And he wec- beckons you down. He says, come down and take your places at my stage of Derek, wonder Derek's inebriated to the point where he's gonna like he's gonna do that oh my god I can't believe it's me they've chosen me they've chosen me and he's gonna start running down towards uh, Jeff counter okay. this is going to be very cautiously stepping down the steps like really Two taking feet his time, time to make like, sure he's got his like when a toddler goes down the, the middle, steps yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got off the boat yeah he's just got off the boat successfully whilst inebriated this level he's like you know what I can't chance this. <laughs> okay. 
It's um, going to be Jeff's day. So do you yep. all make your way Kef's to the stage? Still completely yes. sober. Cautiously, yeah. but yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Keth, you are. Yeah. I mean, Keth, you must be the only sober one there, because I'm assuming everyone else. Oh, yeah, no, I've been drinking. I've yeah. had a but few, but cur- I feel like I've I'm holding it better than the others. I can't get pissed for yeah. three working weeks. Keth, fuck. You do, yeah. Derek started. Derek started. Well, I mean, you've probably taken a week off that. Oh, yeah, because of the journey back. Yeah, you'll have taken a week off that. Yeah. Um, but uh, Derek started as soon as the barrels got opened because, you know, social pressure. <laughs> he Jeff was originally not going to be well, drinking and then Kath said, come on, lad, you must have one drink. At least have one with me. And then he started drinking with Jeff, with <laughs> Kath and shit's just gone wrong for him since then. It yeah. always seems to be well, with it's Flint Frostbeard <laughs> as well. Yeah, just before he has to do a game. <laughs> yeah. So, as you, as you take your places, he says, welcome, welcome, one and all. The name of the game is Catch Freeze. I'm going to show you a, a mechanical animation, and all you have to do is tell me what you see. Just say what you see. Buzz in if you know the answer. You'll get one point for guessing the correct answer. Excellent. Oh. And after the and at the end of the game, the one with most points He's gonna get. will get double prizes. I'm going to nail, absolutely nail this. I feel it Jerry. coming on already. Should we team I'm so old, lads. I know. Should we team up against Kef? Oh, we could team up against <laughs> Kef. The only sober one. You're he's just here. And Why now he's going to get double that? prizes <laughs> again. You're, you're no bow. fan, Kef. He does this drinking. every time. Join right. in. Vo- uh, What's the Fingers ready. <laughs> oh. Sorry. There was a button in front of me. Wow. You lot are keen. How long have you been waiting here? Uh, you'd best not have been rummaging through my drawers. I've told you all about that. Well, we'd best get started then. It's time for a moment with the Dungeon Master. Right, very first thing on the agenda is the most important, and well, that's, of course, is presenting you all with a very huge and heartfelt thank you from all of us here at Royal Britannia. Yet again, you've geared up and scrambled aboard to be part of the piratical nonsense, and it really wouldn't be the same without you lots. Our plucky little podcast would have capsized long ago without you. So, welcome to the crew. <coughs> ah, oh, oh, you're here early, Pedro. Is my watch slow or something? Well, have you got the shout-outs for then, boy? <sighs> what, you've got a joke first? <coughs> oh, I see. This is part of your stand-up show at Nancy's, isn't it? Go on, then. I don't know what do you get if you kiss a dirty bird. <sighs> Chirpies. Mm. Pedro, that really is a terrible joke. Now, give me that scroll and get out of here. <laughs> right. So, this week's shout-out goes to Joshua underscore McGlynn87, who messaged us through Instagram. We're so glad that you're loving the show and that we're helping you through your job. And we're definitely... Definitely impressed. Two weeks to listen to the whole show is good going. So, stand back, everybody, or you're going to get hit by a random celebrity shout out it this week. It seems that when he's not gate crashing beach weddings with his new cookery shows, Gordon Ramsay has been listening to Royal Britannia. Well, part of that story is true, I guess. <laughs> uh, now, I know what you're thinking. Mr. Dungeon Master, how do I get my own shout out? I have an amazing idea for this show and I really want to name an NPC in the adventure. Well, it's no easy task. Only the most skilled, the most trained, the truest of heart and the grittiest of character can pass my tests. (laughs) Not really. It's really easy. If you want to get in top of the show, just look us up on social media. Whichever one you like. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord. We're there. And we love chatting with you lot. So don't be shy and come and get involved. Now, if you really are enjoying the show and you've got this far, so odds are you must be, why not take just a minute to give a lovely five-star review? eh? There's loads of places to listen to the podcast. So wherever you get yours from, some kind words from you guys really helps Royal Britannia to stay afloat. And it also helps more fantastic people just like you to discover the show. And if you haven't already, make sure you bash that subscribe button. Otherwise, Maros will trap you in his dungeon and get working on experimenting his new spells on you. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's enough for now. You lot have been hanging around here for far too long. And then purging to be done. So, get going. Be gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Not so fast, James. Little old Alex here is just going to butt in to bring you a quick word from our sponsor, Manscaped. Now, I don't know about you, but after all this lockdown business, it was starting to get pretty tragic down there. Let's just say it looked like somebody had rolled a hot dog across a barbershop floor. But no longer. No, I am a new, sleek, and frankly more aerodynamic man, thanks to the care packages Manscaped sent to the Buccaneers. Manscaped have just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0, all across Europe, and I've got to say, it's pretty impressive. The Lawnmower 4.0 uses a ceramic blade with four different length settings, and their advanced skin safe technology really helps avoid a lot of those nasty nicks you might get in your knickers. I must say, it was really nice to be able to relax down there. It's a scary moment in every young boy's life, but fear not. Manscaped's new trimmer even has an LED torch for precision shaving when you need to dive into the thicker undergrowth. Manscaped have literally gone balls to the wall on this design, and the trimmer's wireless charging dock not only looks cool, but it runs off a USB-C, which is convenient because although they include one in the box, I also have about a bajillion of them in my house, so I can shave for days, baby! Along with their new Lawnmower 4.0, Manscaped were also kind enough to send us some delightfully scented ball deodorant, which is a bit like a moisturiser for your bits, and this refreshing little potion called a ball toner, and I've got to tell you people, my balls have never been more toned. Also, if you use both of them in your routine, you end up with a spicy and cooling winter treat that'll be your little secret all day long. But it's not just for those of us with dangly downstairs parts. Manscaped also offer a variety of flexible products to suit your grooming needs, from trimming your nose hair to pruning the lady garden. It's no wonder they've already got 4 million customers worldwide. Well, 4 million and 1 now, I guess. So if you're not a fan of the 70s fro, but you are a fan of this podcast, go to manscaped.com and use the offer code ROLLBRIT to get 20% off with free worldwide shipping. That's ROLLBRIT, R-O-L-L-B-R-I-T, for 20% off and free worldwide shipping at manscaped.com. Manscaped, precision engineered tools for your family jewels. We now return you to your regularly scheduled bickering. Fingers steady, let's get That's ready that. to play. That's Catch And the music starts up again, and uh, the screen moves aside, and there's a sort of mechanical puppet animation going on. And you see, uh, Flint sort of, Flint Frostbeard describes what you can see to you, just because it's a podcast and <laughs> visual games don't work. Uh, God, this lovely <laughs> animatronic you've created, though, Honestly, for it's very it impressive. Is, they're going to miss out on it. Oh, it's yeah, amazing. I know. Oh. Uh, and he, he describes, he says, ah, this is Mr. Flump there. Look at him. He's a good looking guy, I Mr. think. Flump. He's, uh, what's he doing there? Oh, he's he's got uh, he's got some sort of number in his hand. I'm not sure what, what that's. Uh, oh, he's oh, he's throwing, throwing the number. Oh, this, that's Mr. Flump again. He's, what's he doing there? He's, he's, he's catching it. He's catching that number. Ah. Oh. Oh, he's, he's throwing it back as well. The other, the, the original Mr. Flump, he's, he's caught the number. The numbers, what, it's, uh, what's the number? it's got uh, double numbers. It's, it's, uh, the, the same one twice. What is that? I forget the name of that number. It's, uh, uh, uh such a situation you got here. It, it, yes, uh, it, it, Mr., it, Mr., it, Mr., it, Mr., it, uh, Mr. It, Keith, what, what was the, uh, it's Keith. But it's, Hold on, no, uh, we have a we have a discrepancy here. Who who buzzed in first? Who buzzed in first? I, I got the. I fit my friend here. I fit he, but oh, <laughs> now me. mine's gone off as well. It was me, and it's catch twenty two. Uh damn! Catch, catch twenty two. It is one point uh, to Mister Keith. He's doing it again. That's fantastic! He's, Great he's news. Okay, 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 fingers, fingers steady, buzzers ready. Here's the next catchphrase. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, look, it's Mr. Flump again. Oh, he's going for a nice early morning walk, I see. Right. Ah, good old Mr. Flump. Oh, no! What's happened? He's he's tripped over and he's tumbling. Oh, no! I didn't mean to press my <laughs> button, but I'm going to say... <laughs> do I get locked out, Mr. Frostiron, if I No, no, locked? you can keep pressing and good guessing. Good to make a uh, guess. I'm going to say he tripped over a crap. Broke his back. Uh, I'm afraid that's not the catchphrase we were looking for. Let's keep, let's see some more. Let's that's see some more. To. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Flumby's tumbling there. What's that below him? Oh, my. It's, uh, oh, it's an oratory device there. That's, uh, that's a few, that's, that's, that's two of them. Two oratory devices. But, uh, oh, there seems to be something wrong with them. Oh, no. It looks like, oh, dear. Mr. Flump, he's yelling. He's yelling, saying, "Look out below! Look out below!" But these oratory devices—they—they oh, they oh, can't. He—he's—he's he's, he's, look before you leap. Is it that one? 
I'm afraid that's not the catchphrase we were looking for. Let's keep pressing and guessing. These uh, these aura tree devices, they 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 can't seem to hear him. But uh, it looks like Mr. Flump is. is definitely tumbling. Oh. It looks like he's going to land on the... He fell ass over. Uh, ears over. T- <laughs> ass. Head uh, over no, ears. that's that's not the catchphrase we were looking for. Let's keep let's keep guessing. Let's keep guessing. Pressing and guessing. Guess. So, do you have any idea no, what I this didn't. is? <laughs> okay. Mr. Flumpy's tumbling down towards these aura tree. I think they might be ears, maybe. Maybe they're ears. They look like ears, don't they? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Is, is it falling on deaf ears? Is it falling on deaf ears? Like this <laughs> this thing is falling on our deaf ears. Is that the right answer? It, it is! Yeah. Oh, that was the catchphrase we were looking for. It was on the tip nice of one, my yeah. tongue. <laughs> All I had was hear no evil, see no evil. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, that's... One point each there. Let's see. Yeah, uh, let's see the next catchphrase. Let's see. Where's Mr. Flump this time? This is oh. exciting. Oh, I look, love he's this. Uh, this Mr. Flump there. He's, he's going oh. for a nice. He's going for a nice uh, walk again. Oh, he's he seems to be seems to he seems to be. Oh, he's got some got some gold there. He's got some gold in his hand. And what's he doing with that? That's a strange look for Mr. Flump. He's he's putting it somewhere very strange. Why well, I don't know why you'd put gold there, but he's he certainly is. He's he seems to be. <laughs> Don't put gold in your ass. <laughs> uh, that, that's um, not the catchphrase we were looking for. It is one that we often use in this group, though. Don't shove it up your ass. Never leave home without your prison slip. Okay, is that uh, what it is? Yes. Let's see. Let's see. I let's see some more. Let's see some more. Some keep, keep pressing and guessing. Keep pressing and guessing. So uh, we get. He's, he seems to be. He might be tasting it or something. I guess he's. Uh, he's putting is this gold, gold, gold like. Uh, Somewhere He's, like oh, it, 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 oh my! It seems to have replaced his mouth. Weirdly, that's that's. I was gonna Damn say it. I was gonna say silver tongue, but I don't think that golden. Ah uh, no, that's not. The... Yes, 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 yes. What's the answer? Come on. Uh, g- gold mouth. <laughs> no, I'm afraid it's not gold mouth. That's not. Let's keep. Let's keep looking. Let's keep looking. So he's. So, Mr. Flump here, he's, uh, he's put this money, he's got this money here, and uh, look, oh, that, that's where he... It's gold. Yes? Uh, 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 ch- change in your mouth. Uh, no, that's not the catchphrase we were looking for. So, let, let's keep looking, let's keep looking. Mr. Ah. Flump here, he seems to have... Yes? Put your money where your mouth is! Ah, that's the catchphrase we were looking nice. for. That fell on deaf ears. <laughs> I was, <laughs> was going to say the man with the golden mouth. Okay, okay, so we got a leader now. They've got a... Don't put it up your ass. There's... Don't put it up your ass. Don't put it in your mouth. Put it in your mouth. Two more is. here. Two more here. So it's all to play for. All to play for. So let's see what this is. So, oh, here's Mr. Flump again. He's uh, walking around. What's this? Like he's... Oh, that's this a word here. He's he's walking up to this word. And, oh, that's that's nasty. What is he doing there? That's not a good look at all. I suppose it'll give you a good look. Uh, maybe he. Hello. Yes. What? What? What do you got? Don't put your words up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the oh, catchphrase okay. we were not looking for. Among this uh, you nice guys are try. very obsessed with putting things in your ass, though, ain't Keeps you? Keeps them safe. So let's keep looking. Let's keep looking. He's, so this word here, he's uh, he's put some. Yes. Is it? Don't fuck it up. Because he's doing some horrible things. <laughs> no, no, that's again. not easy. That's oh, not the catchphrase we're God, looking for. Let's that. see if there's some more. Let's see if there's some more. Uh, so this word, he's he's taken something out of his body and put put something on it. He's put uh, what is this word? Yeah. It's things, things, things. What are things? I don't know. But he's he's, he's taking something, something and he's 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 putting something on things. He's uh, what is he doing? That's so disgusting. Why would you do that? I don't know, but is it take something, leave something? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the catchphrase we were oh. looking for. Let's uh, let's keep pressing and guessing. Keep pressing and guessing. So this thing, he's, he's put a... Is it is it see something, put something on it, something? <laughs> I'm not sure that's even a catchphrase. <laughs> so your, your general advice, Jeff, is to, if you see something, <laughs> put something, put something on something. On <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> very quickly or just okay so let's uh, let's keep pressing and guessing pressing and guessing so, so things you, is it, yes is it what do we got put what your do we got? ass on things 
No, uh, no, it's it's that's not a catchphrase either. Oh, uh, so he he seems to be. Yes. Is it? What, what do you got? Is it put your name on it? No, it's not put your oh. name on it. That's not the catchphrase we were looking for. It looks like Mister Flump here is keeping the thing that he was uh, that he was looking. At. He's keeping it there on the things. Uh, I'm not sure why why how why you keep something. Filling a hold inside yourself with things. <laughs> You're, You're a very okay, sad young man, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the catchphrase we were looking for. And looking might be a key word here. You see, he, he Mr. Flump seems to be... Yes. Keeping an eye on things? Certainly is. He's keeping oh. an eye on things. Oh. Well done. Yes. Nice. Good. No okay. asses at all. So it's uh, level peggings for eye. Keith and for uh, Jeffrey. So Damn let's it. see. Damn it, it might be. We got one more one. round to go. So it looks one. like uh, Mr. Malrus and Mr. Mr. Derek, you're out of the running for this one. But uh, maybe you could steal it away for someone else. Let's have the final catchphrase right. Derek for is the hold day. An action to rugby tackle whoever wins. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Right, he's drunk. He's playful. He's ah, look at Mister Flump there. Look, he's looking rather dapper there. He's gone out for another stroll. He likes going for his walks, does Mister Flump? Good looking guy as well. Yellow, I thought. Uh, nice, good looking chap. And he's gone for a little stroll, but he's uh, maybe, it, maybe it's a little cold out. Who knows? He's he's wrapped up a little bit more than usual. He's got a little chapeau on there. He's uh, looking rather uh, rather uh, well dressed, I think. And. Uh, <sighs> Oh, Mr. Winter's Mouse. coming. <laughs> uh, no, that's not the catchphrase. It was good, but it's not right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good, but it's not right. Um, <laughs> uh, let's keep. Let's keep looking. Let's keep looking. See. Say what you see. Uh, so Jeff. say what you uh, see. There's Mr. Flump there. He's sta- oh, look. He's uh, he's seen someone. He's he's tipping his chapeau. Then he's got something under there. What's that? It's another word. He's got something like beneath his chapeau. Uh, he's, oh, he's put oh. it back on, though. Oh. He's put it oh. back on. He, he's keeping it under his hat. He is keeping it under his hat. Yes. That's the catch nice we were work, looking Derek. for. Excellent. Oh, my. Seconds so, behind you. Seconds behind you. So we have uh, that, that. That was the final round, but it looks like we need a tiebreaker here. Um, Derek uh, was prepared to rugby tackle the winner of that the answering of the question so he sort of just falls on the floor giggling <laughs> he's got a rugby tackle <laughs> he did it himself. with his words instead <laughs> yeah nice ah. okay so tiebreaker question between Keith and Jeffrey damn it crossbeard <laughs> <laughs> this will I be like, am I in trouble the first one to get this Jeffrey <laughs> let's see what's on the screen and the curtain moves aside again, and there's a new thing on the screen. And this time, Ooh. it's uh, it's just ah. it's just a word. He says, uh, "Oh, so no, Mister Flump today. Just uh, just the word on the screen here. It's it seems that uh, this word has been uh, bisected for some reason. It's there's a there's a there's two halves to it, uh, and uh, the the word is like uh, uh, how do you call it? It's like not when you're first. It's not when you're third. It's the so, one in the middle. What is it? Uh, and then it's been sort of broken up into two parts. Uh, what is the word? So you, you're not first and you're not third. Der- Derek and, really uh, wants to go for his puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Split second. That's the catchphrase we were looking for. Oh my god, oh, this is amazing. Well first done, yeah. place with three <laughs> points is Jeffrey. <laughs> the word- the word second is a catchphrase. Uh, uh, split, split second. second. Split second. In, in a split second. Uh, it was a bisected well, second. You see there, there's two parts to the word second. Yeah, Wait, you see. Have I won? Oh, my God. Did, you, did I beat Keth? Did I just you beat Keth? You did, in fact, beat Keth. So, hey, Keth, for the first time, you're not hey, going to be taking on double prizes. Uh, ah. Well, the boys got to ah. something. Well, uh, Jeff just turns around and Ke- sticks his middle finger directly Ke- up at Keith. What a shame you didn't win. Can- <laughs> I wanted to resort to violence then, but I won't. The middle <laughs> finger nearly drew a headbutt. So, <laughs> but Keith uh, held it back. <laughs> let's start. Uh, let's start at the in last place with uh, Neil Poir is Maurus. 
If you would pre please press the button on your podium, it will reveal your prize if you roll a d20. If you roll a d20. <laughs> if you roll a d20. <laughs> One d20 that's Let on your podium. Let me find my d20. <laughs> it will light up. I shall roll my d100 whilst I wait. Oh yeah, sorry, it's a d100, isn't it? Is it d100? No, it's d20, surely. Uh, it's always no, no, I'll just, just like it. It's always usually <laughs> it. it takes uh, a... That's a nine. A nine? Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm. Okay. Mr. Mr. Ma- <laughs> uh, Monsieur Malrus. Monsieur. Monsieur Malrus. Uh, you Has get... there been a murder in this room? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oui, oui, monsieur. Hercule like Fish is here. He, he just is. rips off the mask. <laughs> it was yeah, a little Yeah. Uh, so you, 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 there's a small sort of cylindrical box type thing. So something would hold a, cil- a cylinder about uh, six inches in length, uh, but box shaped uh, is uh, reveals it's itself behind a panel on the podium you're at. And uh, if you open it That's up, you box. will find inside <laughs> a candle. Ooh. What does the candle do? Uh, Flint well, Frostbeard appears over your shoulder. Uh, and he says, ah, oh, very nice. You got, uh, oh, that's that's nice. You've got the dark, dark night lamp. Oh, <laughs> the dark, dark night lamp. Uh, it says, uh, and, he, and he opens up a... And sort of four <laughs> or five o'clock in the morning, that dark, dark night rises, Is doesn't it? it? brooding? <laughs> Did it have a dark past? Were its parents killed in an alleyway? Uh, and he, and uh, he sort of, uh, he opens up a little, uh, a little palm pilot, flips it open, pulls the stylus out, and he uh, beeps it a few times. He says, ah. Yeah, it says here that the dark, dark night light it says uh, once per day for up to 10 minutes, you can light the candle as an action. When lit, a darkness and silence spell centered on the candle's flame, which can be extinguished with uh, as much effort as an ordinary candle, is, uh, is cast. So, oh, so you know, in that case, so it would get blown out by wind. And it stuff certainly would, that. yes. So okay, you can't just leave say, it outside anywhere. They say Malrus lives his out, life then... like a candle in the wind. <laughs> oh. Uh, but yeah, it's very useful if you want to sort of sneak into a room. You can uh, you can cast darkness and silence, and you'll be as invisible as if you were invisible. Very handy. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, once a day uh, for ten minutes. Fuck, I, I mean, it, it, it's only got ten charges in it because it's a candle, and uh, eventually they do mm. burn out. But uh, that's all right, though. Jeff's pretty good. Jesus. Pretty good. <laughs> okay, who's pretty next? Ah, it's young Derek. With one point, yes, hello. Uh, let's see what item did you get. If you press your button, uh, the, the item will reveal itself. I got a 15. 15. 15. <laughs> I hope that's not the noise I make when I you reveal the item to me. Pressure's <laughs> on. Flint beers. <laughs> I mean, uh, flint beers. When, the, uh, when you push the button, a... Uh, a, a a panel opens in the in the podium, and a small sort of uh, yeah, a small sort of um, what do you call it? <laughs> what am I calling this thing? Uh, a small sort of cube appears, a sort of um, tennis ball sized, a, a sort of tennis ball sized cube. And uh, oh, when you open it up, pube. you find inside <laughs> <laughs> just one curly pube <laughs> resting on it. You find inside a red and white. Icosahedron. So oh, the top half of it is red, and the bottom half is white. That looks. Is it? Ra- it's round, or is it's it totally icosahedral? Easy. Oh yes, of course. Do you remember it's golden it's icosahedrons? C twenty. Okay. Golden yes. icosahedron. Uh, bottom is bottom half is white, or the bottom half is, is white, and the top half is red. Okay. And uh, roll it. And Flint Frostbeard appears oh, at your shoulder, and. Uh, Without actually having apparently moved from where Malrus was, he's just kind of there. And he says, ah, now this is cool. I like this item. I don't even need to look this it one up. It's one of my like... personal favorites. It's oh. called Kanto's Icosahedron. Yeah, it's a strange, right. it's a strange Icosahedron. But uh, hey, guess, guess what this can do? It's really good. You can throw um, this Icosahedron at a creature with intelligence of four or less. That creature is captured inside the object, and we will be uh, bound oh to God. the owner. Until... <laughs> Why didn't we see uh, that? Oh. <laughs> well, amazing. I'm going to wait for him to explain. The icosahedron the can only have contain one creature. In order to put another one in, you have to let the other one go, or it has okay. to die. Funnily enough, 
uh, Frostbeard, I'm sure you've been to it. I've got a pub that does the same thing, but it can just fit more people in it. I think at the moment it's six and under, but to a table. Yeah, so but it does say here, a look, uh, the, the nice thing about this one is that the creature inside will be bound to the owner of the object. Yeah, well, I sell quite a lot of beer, so <laughs> that sort of already happens. Well, okay, a bit, I'll, I'll take, take the item myself. Don't you worry about <laughs> no, it. No, 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 no. No, oh, it's mine bet. now. Want, it's mine now. In case, in case somebody, you know, gets a bit lively Not, in there, we can trap them you? in that thing. We can trap them in that, in your nice Kanto's Okaisahedron. So thanks very much, Flint Frostbeard, and I'm nah, going to scurry welcome. away before you can take it back from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, then, is uh, Keth. Keth, what have you got? Yes. Press your button. Roll your dice. Oh. Four. <laughs> Four. Uh, ooh. That was like a sesame street. As you push the button. <laughs> as you push the button. Um, Today's number. <laughs> okay. Um, a small package is revealed in the in the in your podium. Little, Every uh, thing, time. A little box po- pops out. Almost sort of almost sort of uh, ring sized box. And as you uh, as you open it up, you see inside a monocle. Ooh. Is that for Bill? And <laughs> is that for Bill? <laughs> and when he wants to look classy, Frostbeard is Frostbeard yeah. is there, and he says, "Oh, that is interesting." I oh Jesus, Frostbeard, that one. don't do that. <laughs> he says, uh, "Let me look this up." He opens his Palm Pilot again, and beep 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 beep, and he says, "Ah." I know what this is. This is very nice. Look, it just look a regular monocle at first, but uh, when you're wearing it, it says it says right here. Look, and he shows you. It says uh, the viewer has advantage on all checks against delusion magic. Plus, it makes the wearer look more important. And that's the most important thing. Oh shit! So it's oh, like nice. a Lewinsky monocle, or a Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> 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 oh god <laughs> now I'm going Completely to call it the monocle Monica Lewinsky, Lewinsky. okay cool yeah. fine and up next then is that's, that's thank you very much Frostbeard. you're very welcome you won that and up next is Jeff who gets two goes <laughs> oh Jeffrey Jeffrey welcome to the winner's circle first Enjoy I got it. five hold on we'll do one at a time so I need to find just okay number five oh this is a good one. Oh. <laughs> okay, fine. I love, I'm so glad nice. you got this one. <laughs> so as you uh, as you push the button for the first time, uh, a hatch opens and uh, a relatively small box appears there. It's sort of a bit larger than a ring box, but a bit shallower. And um, as you open it up, you see inside is a, a small circular bracelet made of dwarven metal. Ooh. And Floss, Frostbeard Ooh. appears at your elbow, and he says, "Oh, that is a good hey, one. Now use this uh, responsibly, exactly. or else uh, my f- brethren and I will be very upset with you." But uh, I will as well because I totally. I'm don't sure you do. Is. This uh, this is yeah. <laughs> yeah. But why don't you, don't for tell, Jeff, just explain it? it? This is the dwarf oh, thrower. Looks, looks lovely. And uh, <laughs> as you can see, it's got some uh, dwarven runes around the outside. And uh, as you already know, Jeff, you could toss me any time. If uh, if, uh, if you don't speak dwarvish, I'll understand. But I'll translate it for you. It says in big letters in dwarvish runes. It says nobody tosses a dwarf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's like yeah, a yeah, dwarf. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what you gotta there. remember is that yeah. this this bracelet, this band. It allows you to send any dwarf you can see flying 15 feet in any direction if that dwarf is willing. If not, they must succeed on a constitution saving throw of DC 14, whatever the fuck that means. 14. Instantly, Jeff is whacking that on, turning to Derek and going, do you want to fly? Well, as you know, Jeff. (laughs) Awesome. You can toss me any time. You can toss me any time. You love. (laughs) 15 feet in any direction. Okay. Uh, uh, straight <laughs> up. <laughs> Toss me any time. Uh, I'm so glad you got that. I'm so happy. So oh good. my god, that's a. Oh, you can imagine you two bickering, and then you just go and then just <laughs> throw yeah. him away. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, and what's your second one? <laughs> okay, the second one is fifteen. Fifteen. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ooh. And as you push the button for a second time, uh, a large a panel opens and a much larger package is in there. And you see inside is uh, it's quite it's quite big. It looks, I mean, quite a bulky sort of quite a bulky box. And as you open it up, you see inside a full length brown leather duster. Oh. Ooh. Like like the coat, not the thing you clean the house with. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> hide it! Ooh. Hide it from cool. Yalan at all costs, because he will not appreciate imagine, you bringing that into the house. If you hadn't explained that to me, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. seemed yeah, a bit confused. Coat, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I was thinking. Okay, dust rag. leather duster. And um, leather duster. Is that like a feather duster, but shitter. <laughs> no, it's like a big full-length <laughs> coat, but brown yeah, leather. Yeah, quite, cool. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Excellent. And uh, and Frostbeard says, "Oh, now." This is nice. And he pulls out the palm pilot and he Jesus, goes, isn't it? Yes, that's what it's I thought soft. it was. He says, he says, this is the coat of folksy reputation. It's uh, it's Ooh. a brown leather trench coat Ooh. that's been well worn yeah. and it bears the scars of a long forgotten war. So you got to excuse it secondhand. Uh, while you're wearing this coat, oh, okay. you are extra visible to royal guards who will more than likely be hostile oh, towards okay. you. However... Yeah, you I will mean, you be more likely badass. to be treated as a welcome guest by locals and comrades, uh, those who oh, basically shit. those who fought against the royal guard. So uh, but the nice thing friends. is, it offers you more a plus friends. one AC against piercing and oh, slashing dusty. damage, and a plus four stealth in dusty, arid environments. Right. So this is kind of like now some sort of armor, is, is it? Prize. Maybe. Frostbit? Yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, sort of leather armor. Or yeah. is it clothes? Is is it? Cla- would you classify if you were say some sort of all controlling knowing person? Would you <laughs> classify it as armor? That would mean I wouldn't be able to say use my mage armor at the same time as wearing this piece of clothing. You if if you're not proficient in in wearing armor, you wouldn't be able to cast spells while wearing it. Would be the question. So like, if it's just clothes, you can still cast spells. But if you're wearing armor, unless we're not, it's clothes, but yeah, with magical general... protection. Yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah. There you go. There's your answer. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad you cleared that up, Frostbeard. Thank there you. you. Uh, so you're more than welcome. You're so more than welcome. You've given him a brown coat. Uh, it, one might even describe it as a brown though. coat. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> ah. Looks, excellent. <laughs> it looks very... It's, it's dark, like... Uh, it looks good the, on the, you, Jeff. You might there was this, uh, the There were these people. Hair, they fought you. against the, the Empire in the early days. They were famed for wearing Dude, these brown coats. Those. They they had the nickname the brown yes. coats. That's uh, but the guards, the royal guards, oh. they got long memories. They kind of remember these people. Beat them at the uh, the Valley of Tranquilness, I think it was called. Um, yeah, they 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 were they were pretty good, but uh, not good enough to beat the empire. Hopefully, we can be better. Anyone know anything about these guys? And if you get bored, you can just flash people. Yeah, yeah, that too, that too. Oh, so. Okay. To be fair, if you were wearing that, uh, that's my game. Right, it goes right down to my ankles, so it will hide my penis. <laughs> um, as as the theme music <laughs> stops and Jeff goes, yeah, it will hide my penis. As Flint Frostbeard is like, well done, and I'm clapping already. <laughs> but maybe it's towards your penis, you know, so, towards your achievement, or maybe it's Flint Frostbeard. You now know? you've got Thank your new you. toys. Are you heading up Cheers, to Flint. Timber's cabin? Well, where's he gone? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some chests cool. to divide up. Yes. So there's uh, as you oh, enter yeah. Timber's cabin with your new goodies, you uh, you find a chest in there that has uh, a, a selection of items that all accounts by all accounts make up a value of twelve thousand gold pieces. Oof. Ooh. Four Don't ways, Jim. Don't so let me throw you out a window. Three I'm each. It is. Three each so sounds pretty good. I thought. I I'm thought not Jeff to was going to just saving. throw Derek away then and go boof with this new bracelet. Well, <laughs> if, that's if, he tries, if he tries to steal any more well, gold. Well, if you try and steal any, I could wrap you up in here. So we're all sort of at an impasse. Yeah. But I'll impasse you out that window if you fuck me off. So I'll, you know. <laughs> cool. So you've got yourself some gold. And I think we'll finish, up, we'll finish up today's session with a quick update because it's time to level up yes and let's go around the group uh with let's start we've been doing it all i've been doing it all evening i need to start with malwarus yeah hello you're leveling up um (laughs) so i've leveled up to level eight oh nice and um i now have 54 hit points 54 nice yes that's mini um 
a plus two to strength. Okay. Because I had not a lot of strength, so I I, I did two strengths. Um, and I have gained one level three spell slot and a couple of level four spell slots. Oh, nice, nice, and so um, very good. Indeed. I think I can do something else trickery, but I can't find it on my list. A little lesson okay. in trickery. I don't even know how that song goes, but you know, okay, you know cool, the meme. Cool. That's the reference. Yeah. Um, and Derek. Um. So, I now have sixty-one health points. Nice. I also have a thing called evasion, mm. which means that if we suffer from sort of, um, if a ship or if a cannon blows up or if a barrel blows up, we have to make deck saves to uh, get out of it. If I make the save, I don't take any damage. But if I don't make the save, I only take half damage. Oh, That's nice. Um, uh, Tavern Brawler was the other one that I took, so I didn't didn't take an ability score modifier. I took a, a feat instead. Yep. So um, because of my Tavern Brawler, I can... Um, you have proficiency in improvised weapons. I now. get proficiency with improvised weapons. My unarmed strike uses a D4 for damage, so if I'm disarmed, I can still sort of do a little bit of damage, I guess. Yeah. Um, but also, if I hit a creature with an unarmed strike or an improvised weapon, um, on my turn, I can use a bonus action to grapple the target. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. I That's now pretty good. Cause I'm concerned. I'm yeah. concerned. <laughs> and I've got a little bit more health. Than... Oh, and my sneak attack now does 4d6 damage. Good God. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to start Holy being quite it. hard on you guys. And yeah. Hang on, hang on. We haven't done my upgrade yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to you. Keth, what are you doing? How's your upgrade? How's your I level up? also... Leveled up to level eight, everybody. Oh, well, that's good. Um, that's good news. Oh my god! What a coincidence? Um, well, none of you've chosen multi-class yet, so no, 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 not just yet. No, um, just, I've I did just look about got enough class for Jeff. <laughs> for so my HP is now sixty-seven, um, <laughs> which is enorm. Beefy. Beefy. Uh, I now He's get a. Mine. I get a is new really? spell, which is pass without trace. Very handy. Um, and for those that don't know, which Pass includes me, trace. It, um, a veil of shadows and silence radiates from you. And for the duration of the spell, creatures that you choose within 30 feet have a plus 10 bonus to dexterity. So, uh, to dexterity nice. checks, oh, shit. stealth checks, and can't so be like trapped yeah, yeah. except by magical means. So you're welcome, chaps. Oh, Four of you guys out. Nice. Very nice. nice, nice very nice. handy. I really going to bust the crew. Uh, get you something got- called Lands Stride. So moving that means now that moving through difficult terrain is not a problem anymore. Um, nice. So it's not slowed down by anything. And I get advantage and anything planty. So if there's any like Ooh. spikes or jungles or stuff like that, it's, so it is it is no matter. And then I'm just just walk through uh, and you guys are all fine. So well. if we spend, this, do we have to wait for an hour to be in? Nope. To get all of that, or is that just something nope, you have? That happens oh, all the time. Really? Um, my ability scores improved. Uh, dexterity and wisdom have improved, and also um, Bill's HP has increased too. He's now up to thirty. Oh. Oh, I mean, I get the impression that Bill's Excellent. almost got more HP than Jeff at this point. <laughs> it's um, they're, they're well, quite yes. close, I think. It's very close. Let's have a look at this. So, so Jeff, I rolled badly with my upgrade. Oh dear. Yeah. So I rolled. I only have one d6 per level for an upgrade on health on hit points. And I got a one and a two, but mm. I do get um, some additional points, I believe, from his constitution, constitution modifier, modifier, which is what Jeff. It's really high, isn't it? It's, it's quite. Uh, oh yeah, plus there. one. Oh good. Um, so <laughs> that gives me a grand total of five. Now five to my original twenty nine is thirty four. So I've just pipped Bill this. <laughs> you you only them. just so have more hit points than a snake. Than a snake. Than a snake. Yes, he's a wing yeah. snake though, so he can fly. Yeah. Um, let's just you know give him credit where he's due. Can you can yeah. you fly with your level up yet? Well, no, actually, unfortunately, I can't. But what can you do? Um, however, I did think <laughs> a little bit of Keth with mine because my level four spell, I've now got some access to level four spell slots. So I thought, oh, I'll have a level four spell. And that has been stone skin. Ooh. That Ooh, allows cool. me, with concentration, to turn the flesh of a willing creature to something as hard as stone, which means they are resistant to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Slashing. So someone like Keth, who might want to be a tank, slashing. he could run in there and have You really could skin. make Keth like quite yeah. an unstoppable tank with that. 
Yeah. If I added machine. that potentially with haste mm. um, or something it might work as well. Yeah. Uh, if we could add that to him. Uh, but the other one I went, I actually went with a little bit of the storyline. You know, Go on. So I play along that. And because we've just come out of the wild magic zone, I've gone with a level one spell mm. as my other spell of Chaos Bolt, right. which is very similar to Fire Bolt. But for those of you who don't know, you un- you hurl an undulating, warbling mass of chaotic energy at one creature in range of 120 feet. Ooh. You make a ranged spell attack against the target, and on a hit, the target takes 2d8 plus 1d6 damage. Then I get to choose one of those 2d8s, and the number on that die determines the attack damage type. So it's either acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, oh, so poison, psychic, elemental. thunder, etc. And if I happen, if both the D8s happen to be the same number, then it jumps to the next target within 30 wow. feet, and then I get to do the whole thing all over again, and oh, if it gets double again, it jumps and jumps and jumps and jumps. Good. And if I cast that at a higher level, using a second spell slot or more, I can then each target will take an extra 1d6 of each type of damage. Wicked. That's so you, very basically, cool. Basically, you can hurl... So I'll sort of like random energy. Yeah, yeah, so it's basically it's a wild fireball. So that's what I'm looking just, for. It's, it's wild magic. Just, just found fireball. two spells that I don't think I had before. Okay. okay. Which are quite cool. Uh, Dimension Door and Polymorph. Oh, nice. Oh, You've got, yeah, got them, have you? Fuck. Brilliant. Nice. Those, are the ones that... those were the two, literally, that I was toying with having instead. Yeah. yeah. So, so those really are both well. very cool spells. They have just yes. appeared on my list of spells. Nice. Mm, very yeah. cool. So you everyone's got some cool stuff. And you've got yes, some gold. Badass. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And oh, how much good. gold do I have? Uh, you've got an extra 3,000, I think, if you're splitting it evenly. Mm, yes. I believe But it. I'll leave that yeah, up to I you guys. And as you're, as you're sort of uh, rifling through these chests, this chest, divvying up some money, uh, who's got a stone of fast speech on you? Hey. Hey. Okay. We all have. I, I am the junior communications okay. Everyone officer. Everyone that's got one on you, you hear Timber's voice. Come through the uh, through the radio, and this and it says, "Boys, I imagine you're still uh, enjoying the pleasures of flint frostbeard, such as it is. But uh, at your earliest convenience, I would very much appreciate it. Uh, tomorrow morning, at uh, possibly the earliest, maybe not too early. I, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest. I'm having a few a few beers myself. It's uh, as you as like you well you. know, a bit of a, a bit of an evening. But uh, come and see me in the morning." We have. Uh, I have been given some information, and I wish to discuss it with you. Will okay, do, Captain. Captain. We'll definitely okay, see you in the morning. Okay, Captain. Fuck off till the morning. Right, lads. Ooh. I'm going to turn to everybody else and go. Over. I... Fuck off, over, Captain. Fuck does off. anybody fuck off. want? Does anybody want a kebab? <laughs> <laughs> so Bluebeard's funeral was hell. We all drank and got merry. But once again, Jeff and Derek sucked down one too many. After a lovely service, he's off to see Frostbeard. Could his latest game be all that they feared? Catchphrase was the game. Was the game. So our bucks have a gas. But then Morris reminds us not to put gold in our ass. Jeff is the winner and gets two new toys. Then an icy one split of gold for our boys. Now is Timber's call about a piece of eight that's out there? Well, you'll find out next time on Road Britannia. Now then, you lot, we need your help. We need to make our piratical adventure simply the best D&D 5e podcast out there on the seven seas. So we've decided to be very brave indeed and launch our own Roll Britannia Patreon page. And don't you worry, though we may be scoundrels and vagabonds in the shattered lands, we're certainly not going to be stealing your hard-earned booty to line our coffers. All of the money we raise will be ploughed right back into the show so we can be the best that we can be so what's in it for me i hear you say well there's a whole treasure chest worth to be had there's exclusive buccaneer prologues so that you can learn some of the secrets of our favorite heroes and where it all began you'll also be able to read the finest tabloid on the high seas the daily teledath you can get your hands on arc exclusive merchandise too that you won't find in our shop and the best part 
your very own handcrafted, beautifully made and totally unique piece of crap art drawn just for you by your favourite buccaneer. Just look out for Roll Britannia on Patreon.com or even easier, follow the links in our social media or Linktree pages and let us navigate the way for you. And worry not, the nautical antics of the Royal Britannia Buccaneers will still be available every Wednesday, as usual, absolutely free. After all, we certainly wouldn't want any of our amazing and loyal fans to be spending any more than they can afford. We wouldn't have got anywhere that you and all the other awesome fans out there. So, with your help and your support, you, yes, you, can make this show even better. Sports Social Podcast Network. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.